Hey team, today we will be taking a look at how to use the XLOOKUP function in Excel. XLOOKUP has some advantages over similar functions like VLOOKUP in that you can search for your result in any direction. You can return multiple columns, and you can perform both horizontal and vertical lookups similar to index match. We'll get started with the basics. Starting with a simple employee spreadsheet, I want to perform an X lookup to pull in the tax rate based on the employee max income. We'll begin by entering the X lookup function into this cell, and then let's take a look at each of the arguments Excel is asking for. First is the lookup value, which I'll input as the income cell. Next up is the lookup array. For that, I'll click and drag my cursor over the max income column. After another comma, I'll enter in the return array, which will be the tax rate. Those are the only fields that are required for the XLOOKUP function. But let's take a look at some of the optional fields to see how they can help. After entering another comma, if a value is not found, I'm able to add in a parameter here for what I'd like to be returned. So for example, I could enter in the text not found, and that's what Excel would return to me if a match cannot be located. To continue on right now though, and to get to the next parameter, I'll enter zero to essentially bypass this field. And let's take a look at the next parameter, which is match mode. Excel gives you a guide here about what available inputs you have to enter. The default is zero, which is an exact match. But in a situation like this, I may want Excel to look for an exact match or the next smaller item, which would be negative one, or the next larger item, which would be the number one. I could also enter the character two in order to have a wildcard character match. And that could be helpful in certain situations where the spelling might not be exact. Excel gives you the ability to find what you're looking for by inputting these wildcard characters. For now, I'll enter negative one. Then we'll go to the final search parameter, which is search mode. Again, you have a few options here. We can search from first to last, last to first, or perform a binary search. But for now, I'll just enter the number one. And you'll notice based on the income put in of 45,000, while that's not an exact match, Excel returned the next lower item or next smaller item of 21% based on the XLOOKUP parameters we input. Now let's look at what would happen if I edit the formula, I go to match mode and you can click this link here to pull up that parameter and I take out the negative and just leave the number one. Now Excel is gonna return the tax rate of 23% because while there's no exact match, Excel is now moving to the next larger item. In this next example, I have a report that shows both the name and higher date of employees based on their employee ID, and I'm gonna use the XLOOKUP function to pull in both the name and higher date based on employee ID. To begin, I'll enter the XLOOKUP function. The lookup value in this case will be employee ID, so I'll click that cell. After a comma, the lookup array will be the column with employee IDs. Now for the return array, I'm gonna click and drag the mouse over both the name and hire date columns to return both fields. Remember, these are the only three parameters that are required for this function to work. So after I click enter, both the name of the employee and their hire date are returned. And if I change the employee ID, the name and hire date are updated as well. In our final example, let's look at a situation that's a bit more advanced using a nested XLOOKUP function. For this situation, I have my employee names as columns up at the top of my report and training statuses below their name in a column. And based on the employee name, I wanna return the status of their training for my report. We'll begin with the XLOOKUP function. The lookup value I'm gonna start with in this case is going to be the cell with the training name in my reporting template, so HR training. After a comma, the lookup array will be the training column. For the return array, I'm gonna enter my nested XLOOKUP function. The lookup value for this one will be employee name. 
After a comma, the lookup array will be the column headers with employee names. And the return array is going to be the columns with employee name as well as their training statuses. Before entering the close parentheses, let's make the applicable references absolute, which will be the columns within this formula, as well as the particular row for the training in my reporting template. I'll enter the close parentheses, click enter, and you're able to see that Excel was able to pull in the training status for HR training for Chris. And if I click and drag this formula across, I get the applicable training statuses for systems and access for Chris Johnson as well. If I change employee name to Katie, you'll notice the formula updates to Katie's training completion. I hope you found all of these examples helpful. Please like and subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell for additional upcoming videos and leave comments about additional tips you'd like to see covered.